Hi and welcome back again. Um, real pleasure here today to, to be here with Caroline Densley. Um, Caroline and I have known each other for quite a long time so this is a, a little bit more nicer, nicer chat and to give you a little bit of background. Uh, welcome Caroline. Thank you very much Simon, great to be here. What's the um, image you've got in the background there? That is the beach I go walking on. So oh. that's my, my bit of uh, <laughs> where I exercise and, and uh, enjoy the sunsets and yeah, it's good. And you're based in South Australia. Yes, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, when uh, when we first met, you, uh, I think you, you've got quite an interesting history. I, I wanted to just briefly touch on. Um, uh, I know you're I know you're a private person, and, and, and some of this stuff will, will remain so. But you did have a, a period of time uh, in your youth uh, before you became a travel agent in London. Uh, with a you spent a bit of time nannying. Yes, I spent oh, on and off over about nearly 10 years working for different families and, and people in the UK as a nanny, which was an amazing experience. Um, uh, there's one particular person, the only reason I ask is because my, my kids at the moment are um, spending uh, every weekend watching live uh, broadcasts on YouTube of um, Andrew Lloyd Webber uh, musicals. Uh, I, think, yes. uh, I, th I think that was one of your, one of your clients. <laughs> Yes, that's what I spent two and a half years working for um, Andrew and his wife, Madeline, looking after their two little boys. There's, there's more children, but um, I was around when their first two boys were little fellows. And uh, yeah, it was an incredible experience. It, might, it must have been absolutely, absolutely amazing. Yeah. And you returned from London and you came to Australia. Tell me, tell me the line of events that got you into what you do today. And I think you, start, you, you, you had a, a series of fortunes that got you positioned in Indigenous tourism, which I guess at the time would have been quite a new and novel thing. Yeah, I returned back to Australia in the mid-90s and um, didn't quite know what to do with myself, having lived overseas for a long time, having far too much fun. Um, but I fell into tourism and um, learned an, a lot from some really entrepreneurial tourism people and then had the good fortune, fortune to be able to start my own business uh, with a friend and we've started Diverse Travel. In, it sort of started through an interesting process. It was uh, through a scholarship program with the University of Adelaide. Um, so we had uh, office space and overheads and studied a graduate um, diploma in business enterprise at the same time. So it was a really fantastic way to start a business in a really supportive, supportive environment. And um, not long after starting the business, we were uh, approached by someone who wanted us, was wondering if we would be interested in setting up an art, land and culture special interest itinerary for an American institution to visit Aboriginal, um, uh, different Aboriginal groups across the country. And yeah, that was the entree into learning about uh, wonderful Indigenous culture in Australia. And you, you've taught me a lot about, about that. There's a, there's a, I think the reality of Indigenous uh, culture and tourism in Australia is quite different from what the general world thinks it is, but it's also the reality as with everything is, is better and more intriguing. Just give me, can you, can you describe quickly what, what people, I guess, how, how do people's expectations before they travel with Indigenous people in Australia differ from what they get and what they discover afterwards? Well, I think a lot of the international clients have potentially been through Africa and parts of Asia where you volunteer, you um, work in a village, you know, so they have a different approach to working with the Indigenous people in those countries, whereas in Australia, our Indigenous people are very westernised, you know, we live in houses and drive cars and live in communities and towns and ride amongst us ourselves in the cities. And I think that surprises some people, surprises a few Australians as well. Um, but we have a very strong cultural connection to their country where no matter where they live, and they're great storytellers and so spending time with uh, Aboriginal people is uh, broadens people's minds, it really connects them to uh, the earth and the environment around them, you see it through different eyes, um, eyes that have been around for 40, 50, 60,000 years and um, you know through multiple generations with very important stories have been passed down through those generations so it's a fascinating um, experience, it's incredibly rewarding to spend time on country with Aboriginal people, whether it's in a city or um, out in remote Australia or regional Australia, it's really very special. Now, this was a film. I think it was produced uh, sometime during or shortly after the uh, mentoring program you were involved with. Is that correct? Yes, there was a 
there's been a few different programs over the years, but there was one called the Indigenous Tourism Champions Program, which has now morphed into a, a, a thing called Discover Aboriginal Experiences with Tourism Australia. And uh, Tourism Australia went around and filmed uh, quite a few other different products um, with James Fisher, who's a well-renowned photographer and filmmaker. And so there's a lot of extraordinary experiences out there that have been recorded um, that uh, Tourism Australia use in their domestic and international marketing. And your and your experiences. I mean, you you've travelled extensively in Australia to some of the more remote places. What what is it that and they, what does it take for people to have the kinds of experiences that people like you and I take for granted? And well, I guess we devote our lives to trying to give to other people. What does it take for other Australians even to have those sorts of experiences? I think I think a lot of people don't appreciate the amazing country we actually live in. That's the extraordinary thing. And I, I was probably guilty of that in my own way, in a little way, spending, like a lot of Australians do, go overseas. And I ended up spending quite a bit of time overseas exploring the world and then you know, came back and then realised what an extraordinary and wonderful country Australia is uh, to explore and live in. And, you know, from whether it's our Indigenous culture, it's our unique wildlife, it's the flora, the fauna, the, the coastal environments, the Great Barrier Reef, the world heritage areas of, you know, you've got Kakadu, you've got the, the wet tropics. Um, there's so many interesting um, parts of Australia to explore and visit. And, you know, people just need a sense of adventure because it's not all luxury. Uh, it's not necessarily all the most comfortable of um, accommodations, but it's about the experience. And if you can prioritise uh, focusing on and enjoying the experience, then if you have to sleep in a swag under the stars, which is a part of the experience, um, may have a long drop dunny and no shower for a week, but, you know, that you embrace it and uh, it's, it's incredibly rewarding what you come away with. You grow as a person and you meet extraordinary people. What's your What's your favourite? Do you have a favourite place? Are you allowed to have a favourite place? <laughs> there's a couple that I mean. There, there's a place in Arnhem Land that I love deeply. Um, in Western Arnhem Land, I've been there multiple times. Uh, there's some spectacular places in the Kimberley, um, but there's also in my own state. You know, the wine regions in South Australia, the Eyre Peninsula is an extraordinary place. Kangaroo Island. Mm. There's no shortage of uh, places that hold uh, have a real footprint on my heart. But I think yeah, there's a few. I love the remoteness and the great sense of place of um, Davidson's Arnhem Land Safari Camp in, in West Arnhem Land, a place that I really enjoy visiting and been back to multiple times. I have a feeling we were talking earlier about how we met. I've got a sneaky suspicion that might have been via those guys uh, when we were filming up there. It might have been. I think I was involved in um, doing some work in East Arnhem Land back in the late 2000s, and I think that's how we connected yeah. once when I was up there. We first put in touch with each other. I believe so, but you're, so so um, for for everyone out there. I mean, so Carolyn and I work have worked very closely together. I'm very fortunate to to have known Caroline uh, and be introduced to her from the start. And there are a few people who are, who understand Australian Australia better from both a travel and a logistics perspective. But also, if you've listened to our webinar a couple of days ago on the Daintree, um, Caroline rattles off a long list off the top of her head of all the places that you can go and the things you can do. Um, you know, the kind of expertise that, that only comes with uh, decades of experience traveling to all corners of, of the country. And it's been a real, you know, it really uh, tremendously valuable for, for me. We spend a lot of time putting groups together from other parts of the world to come here together, but we, we don't spend so much time doing it for Australians, which I think is always a bit of a shame. So maybe, maybe that will change in, in due course. Um, but you also uh, specialize, uh, well, okay, let's just say, I mean, you like wine as well. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We live in the country with some of the most beautiful, um, particularly in South Australia. We've got uh, wine regions right on our doorstep, many of them with fantastic wines. And you and you are the official, just remind me, uh, how do we put it, the official representative? Uh, the, the Travel Network partner to Adelaide's membership of the Great Wine Capital. So there's um, a few countries around the world that are uh, started in Bordeaux. And I was privileged to be in Bordeaux for the AGM in November last year. Um, two years ago, it was coming up three years ago, in this coming November, I was in Chile in South America for the AGM. So it's enabled me to travel and meet a lot of the wine people from the other great wine capitals. And we, the exciting thing was we hosted the AGM in Adelaide in November 2018. And so all of the European and South American and American um, colleagues came over and we had a wonderful time showcasing South Australia. It was incredibly exceptional itinerary that was put together by uh, the Great Wine Capital membership Adelaide it was wonderful. 
It's just another example, isn't it, of where Australia punches above its weight, as it always seems to. Uh, that Adelaide, Adelaide, a place where, uh, which is, I guess, on the tr on the tourism side, on the lower lower levels of, of many people's lists, is considered on a global level to be one of the top places in the world for uh, a major tourism product, uh, being being wine wine travel. Yeah, I think um, we've been involved in wine tourism since around about 2000, when we took on a, a business called Venture Wine Tours Australia. And way back then, you know, people were, small groups were traveling to Australia to experience wine tourism with their wine societies or, you know, family groups and couples traveling together or FITs. Mm. And, you know, we've been very privileged to host a lot of amazing people. And But a lot of them, their key drivers were they, they knew of a wine of Australia's, whether it was Grange or one of our famous wines, um, but they didn't necessarily know where in Australia it came from. That's, they just wanted to go to where it was produced. So that was very easy to bring them into South Australia and then wow them with all the other wine regions and the fantastic experiences that are available and uh, then share them with the other states. So I think I think we, we the final final thing I wanted to ask you was um, I mean we, we we're working together obviously at the moment on uh, trying to reconnect people through you know hopefully post post the coronavirus impact uh, a chance mm -hmm. for Australians to perhaps discover a little bit more about their own country. What is your best advice for people wanting to learn more about Australia? Well, I think while we've got time on our hands, is so many companies are producing online content. So there's uh, incredible virtual uh, snorkeling at Lady Elliot Island. Mm. There's uh, some great stuff coming out of Kangaroo Island from one of the tour operators. Uh, the people at the Bustledon Jetty are doing exciting things. And it's all online. It's all available. It's free content. It's fantastically informative. And I think, you know, if you've got a, an idea of a destination, then we're the sort of organization that pulls all the nuts and bolts together. It's, you know, people think it's often easy to do it yourself, but you often miss out on some of the unique experiences that are known, that we know because of our over 20 years of working in regions and knowing different personalities and different people, that we can weave in some extraordinary experiences into an itinerary that you just can't buy off the shelf. And um, I think a lot of people are going to want a lot of assurance going forward around investing dollars in a holiday in the hope that the, there's not a resurgence of the coronavirus or another we you know we were dealing with bushfires around december january with our clients and having to restructure and move itineraries and then suddenly we've had you know massive movement of itineraries into 2021 because of the coronavirus and having a, a, booking through an organization like ours we are that on-ground content you know person we we're doing all that work for you and you know it doesn't cost you any more to book a trip through an organization like us you just get the benefit of our 24 7 uh, support and our, our knowledge intimate knowledge and intimate connections around the country so there's great value in working with organizations that pull together all the nuts and bolts and uh, do it all for you and in in consultation with you you know that's mm. the thing we tailor, tailor make 100 percent of our itineraries to ensure that we are delivering on what the client wants well, it's certainly the reason we, we work together and uh, we'll leave it there. But I will say that we won't be the, first, the last time uh, people hear from, from you because we, you and I will, will probably be side to side on a few webinars coming up now anyway to talk about other regions of Australia. Um, thank you very much for your time, Caroline. Absolute pleasure, as always. And uh, stay safe down there and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look forward to catching up again in the next few days and doing this all over. Thanks so much, Simon, and stay safe and stay well, and I uh, look forward to catching up again. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>